Hello, my friend. I've had the opportunity to get the X-H2S out into the field and actually put it through its paces a few times now in this video. Hopefully you've seen that one as well as a couple of weddings that I haven't released yet that I'm still working on and then a few other random little projects or things that I've just been shooting for fun. So now that I've actually gotten to use the camera in the field and I've gotten to put it through some paces, there's still a lot more to be done there, but I have some menu settings that have already helped me to speed up my workflow and make things a little bit easier for me when I'm trying to access specific settings and get into different modes or functions because this camera is different than the X-T3 and the X-T4. Using my X-T3, I had gotten pretty much into a set custom button layout and everything was working great for me. And the X-T4 was hardly an adjustment at all. But this is a huge change, not just for Fuji, but the menus, the buttons, the layouts, everything is drastically different. And there are some really, really helpful little settings that I've found in here that I really am excited about currently how I have the menus and the buttons laid out as well as the custom dials, which are now programmable to different modes for video. So everything about this is a huge change and really exciting. But with that has come me digging through the menus again, trying to refresh my understanding of what I want to set up in here. One last clarification to make before we go ahead and dive into the menu is that everyone's needs and workflow are different and everyone's making different kinds of videos. So for me doing travel and run and gun and a little bit of landscape as well as weddings especially, this setup has worked well for me so far. But even within that world, there is still a bunch of different uses. So for instance, with weddings, I don't use face tracking a whole lot. And in general with cameras, I don't use face tracking a whole lot. So you'll see there will be one button assigned to that, but I use that to make the point that you might take these settings and adapt them to everything that you want to do. So take some inspiration from this. You don't have to set it up exactly this way. If you use different buttons, if you use different settings than I do, I am more than sure that that will happen. So just take this as inspiration. I'm just gonna walk through my menu setup so far. And if it changes someday down the line, I'll try to update this video. But for the time being, here we are. So we're just gonna walk item through item on the Ninja 5 through the menus. Uh, and you'll also see how I've got my custom dials set up. So let's just dive in. Uh, starting with the movie settings. So I'm actually gonna leave the menu here and here you can see that I've got programmed different settings. Uh, now, this is C2, so custom two, and I'll show you how to set this up later, but uh, the shutter speed is normally not 250, it's normally set up for 24 frames per second, and so it's at 48 on the shutter speed by default, but in order to do this, I didn't wanna blow out the uh, exterior here, so. Uh, you'll see, I'm gonna cycle through these now. So C3, custom three is 60, 4K 60. And then C4 is 4K 120, and the shutter speed I left at 240. And then C5 is 4K 24, uh, but this is F log two now. So basically it's my classic Chrome custom uh, versus F log two. So it's the exact same thing. C5, six, and seven are all F log two, but I have the uh, C432 basically set up for classic Chrome, but the exact same settings otherwise. So I'll go here uh, and normally, again, the shutter speeds are set up correctly to match the frame rate. But for this setting here, I'm just showing you uh, so that the outside doesn't blow out. But Anyway, so right away, that's kind of my custom dials and how I have them set up. I'll walk through how uh, you do set those up in a moment, but those are the setups right now. And now we'll jump into the menu. Uh, first of all, let's actually start with the My Menu and we'll get into this later, but uh, I'm gonna try to start from the smallest like menu stuff to the bigger. So in the My Menu, I have my movie settings list. And fortunately, Fuji did condense the movie settings into one item. It's a little confusing some parts of the menu. Gerald Undone mentioned this in his X-H2S 
video, but Fuji loves to give you a ton of options and I love it. I'm really thankful for that, but it definitely ends up being a little bit overwhelming or confusing too many options at times. So anyway, here in the movie settings list, you can work through each of the one by one settings. So 4K is right here and you can go through your different frame rate options. Uh, I pretty much always leave it on 4K, although I do love using 6K. So far, it's been really nice for me. Uh, and if I need to access it, it's one click away inside of the My Menu, you know, two or three clicks, I guess, and then you're into 6K. So then I always have it on dual card recording H.265 Long Op 422 at 200 megabits per second. I'm almost always recording that. Rarely ever am I going to be seeing myself using ProRes or RAW recording, which is a later setting. But anyway, F-Log 2, F-Log 1 or F-Log, and then Classic Chrome or other picture profiles can be accessed right here. Um, I have those set up on my custom dials, so ideally I don't have to come in here, but if I ever need to, it's in there. And then RAW, if for any reason I need to be recording RAW, you can go access it there. You can also turn on proxies when you're recording in ProRes. So when you're recording ProRes, you can record companion proxy files. Uh, and then data level settings. This is really important because if you change to ProRes, you need to change to video range. So that's literally the only reason I have it here uh, next to the movie settings, but if you change to ProRes, you need to change to video range, but otherwise you don't need that. So Flickrless SS setting is uh, nice to have on wedding days, especially because if you get into a venue where the lighting is flickering, um, then you can get into some really specific settings here. And this is what this does. So if I turn that on, now you can see my shutter speed is at 256. And when I incrementally change it, it's really strange increments, but that really helps when you're working with flickering lights and you need to calm them down is you need to get into very specific shutter speeds. So that's what that setting does, but I typically have it off. Then the zebra settings, I have these in here just because sometimes I do need to access them uh, to turn them on or off. Um, so you can do that here. Uh, something funny that is here is that F-Log2 has to be set to 85%. Gerald Undone covered that in his video, but 85% for F-Log2, but for F-Log and for Classic Chrome, you can set it to 95 or 100. Um, but I have that set up inside of my custom dials, so I don't really have to touch this. But then the interframe noise reduction, sometimes, again, rarely, but sometimes I will turn this on at a wedding reception for speeches or toasts or uh, slower dances, but not fast dancing footage. But I'll turn this on when the camera is locked off on a tripod, somewhat stable of a shot environment, and I just don't wanna have to do noise reduction later maybe. So anyway, that's a scenario where I would use that, uh, and that's why it's in the My Menu. But then after this, I think it'd be helpful to go through the Q menu. And this is where I'm probably gonna mention these things in my review, but there are some funny menu quirks that we are gonna talk about in this video. And that is the first one, this manual versus program versus uh, you know the other modes here. And I just don't understand why that's locked in its place in the Q menu. If I'm misunderstanding that, I would love to be corrected. But as I understand it right now, you cannot change that menu setting from its place. So the menu or the, the manual program shutter priority thing can't be changed. It is what it is. And it feels like a pretty big bummer that that's locked there. Uh, I don't use my Q menu terribly often because you'll see I have buttons for everything or I have the custom dials. But here inside of my Q menu, the big ones are the IBIS and the OIS, which I can turn on and off. And you'll notice there's a red dot appearing on things when I change it. And we will get into that later. It's, the, it's basically telling you, this is not part of this custom dial. Do you wanna change that? So anyway, then 
there is the uh, on and off for the extra image stabilization. And then there is the AF mode. So whether or not you want it on zone or you want it on a, on a box, like an area focus, I always have it on area focusing. That's gonna be addressed in my review, but I'm also making probably a separate video about autofocus with these cameras using Fuji. I just never use anything that's not the box. Um, and then I don't really need to touch these, but if I need to access them more quickly than the My Menu, I have access to my resolutions, my frame rate, and then white balance, that's gonna be set up later in the buttons, but if you've watched any of my past videos, you actually already know how I have my white balance set up. It just has changed locations on this camera. So now that we're done with that, uh, I think let's go through the movie settings and then we'll get into the button layouts. So in the movie settings list, you already saw this, uh, you can access everything. The shooting mode, again, I, you know, I guess I see some reason for having these things in here, but uh, I don't need to use it. So um, then your movie mode is almost the same thing as what's inside of your movie settings list uh, at this top button here. So um, again, you don't need to access it there. Just go to your movie settings list. Uh, high speed recording, this you do need to access periodically, but you could set this to either a button or you could set it to your Q menu. There is a way to set it to your Q menu that I think makes a lot of sense. Um, but if you need to access this for any reason, it's here. Um, but I have it set up on my custom dials and I think that's the best way to have it set up is having a slow motion set up in your custom so that you don't have to get into the menus to turn it on. Then your media record setting, which Again, is inside of your movie settings list, but it's basically proxy or which card are you recording to. Again, that's inside of your movie settings list. And then your HDMI output settings, that's gonna control raw as well as controlling whether or not it's displaying your menu on the camera. I'm not gonna go in there right now because I don't wanna mess with the fact that it is recording the menu on the camera right now. So I'm not gonna play around with that right now, but it records raw externally to the Blackmagic Video Assist as well as the Atomos Ninja 5. And you can access that inside of this area, but I don't. So fix movie crop magnification. We will touch on that later. I have a button for it and I really love the button. So then F-Log recording, again, that's inside of your movie settings list. I kind of wish they would have just consolidated those items Anything that's in the movie settings list doesn't necessarily need a dedicated item to me, but then data level settings, we already touched on that earlier. Uh, photometry is basically where is it metering? And I have it set on center weighted. I find that that's just helpful for me. It's kind of how I think about metering in general. So to have it set that way, I find has helped me out. So then the flickerless uh, shutter speed, we already talked about that the IS mode, and then the IS boost mode. Um, we touched on those inside of the Q menu, so kind of already walked through them. And then the ISO, uh, the ISO I'm not gonna change inside of here, but I do have a gripe that we're gonna walk through later on about that. Zebras, we're good. We already touched on those in the My Menu. The movie optimized control, okay. Turn this off, I think, at all costs. I, I just can't. No, I can't imagine the scenarios where this feature on Fujifilm cameras is useful. I know that you can operate the camera silently, I think is maybe the perk or what is happening here, but I have only ever seen this cause problems for myself and for others. So I say turn it off. I've never needed it. I've never noticed missing it. I don't, yeah, there are other touch settings that you can still use without having this on and I have noticed this caused people problems with uh, being able to access different settings and they don't know why they can't do it. And it turns out it's because that was turned on. So I just turn it off. Uh, tally light, I always have on the front and the rear both. I like to have them both on. I don't want them blinking. I just want them as solid lights. But if for any reason you can see a reflection in a shot or anything, um, or if for any reason you're in a dim environment and want it off, you could just go turn them off. But 
Uh, I don't access that ever, so it's not in my My Menu, it's not anywhere else. I just leave them both on. Cooling fan, I don't have it, so it's not set up. The Edit Save Custom Setting. This is how you manage your C1 through your C7 dial. Uh, however, you have to first go into your custom mode settings and you have to change which of them is on which mode. So is it photo or video? Because this will control what menu you're looking at and what display is happening on your screen. So I have them all set to video except C1. And the reason I have it set this way is because C2 is my classic Chrome at 24 frames per second. And C1 is my Portrait 400 recipe uh, installed. And by my Portrait 400, I mean Fuji Weeklies uh, that I just have installed here. So that way when I'm on a trip and traveling and I'm just using this as a fun camera, I can switch back and forth between the photo recipe as well as my default kind of video recipe. So anyway, that's why those are set up that way, but you have to set them up and you have to go choose which one is going to be used for which. So anyway, that's why you have to do that first before is because then we go in here and you can see I've made changes so that I could record this video. But, um, but inside of here, you can either go uh, make changes inside of the mode by saying edit or check um, and then you can save the changes or you can just go set the camera go through all the menus go set everything up and then just save the current settings so all that I did was pretty much starting with C2 my custom 2 I set up everything exactly the way that I wanted it went through all of the menu items and I saved that and then what I did was I copied, copied C2 onto C3. But then I went and changed the frame rate and I changed the shutter speed. And that was all I needed to do. And then I copied that onto the next one and I changed the shutter speed and the frame rate. And there may be different adjustments that you wanna make for different settings. So you can have one set up for raw external recording. You could have one set up for uh, F-Log 1 or F-Log 2, you could have one set up for any variety of things. Almost all of the settings get saved to the custom dial. So it, it actually kind of surprised me just how like serious these custom settings were, that it was not just the video mode and the movie settings and the frame rate or whatever like that. It was It was almost everything in the whole menu layout. So anyway, it's really nice to be able to customize everything that's in here and then you can even name these custom settings. I might eventually do that when I feel significantly more permanent with my layout. For the time being, I haven't done that, I haven't named them, but it is really helpful to be able to name each one of them so that you can assign them and sort them and then keep track of what is what. But for the time being, I have not done that, but this is really important. This is how you go edit and check your custom settings. Uh, right here is your uh, custom settings that show you the shooting mode and the after, after or and shutter speed. Uh, but everything in here is subject to change. So you can set the whole thing up however you want um, and then save it. So. That's really, really cool. This is a huge upgrade. This is a huge change for the X-H2S compared to the X-T3, the X-T4, and other Fujis. So anyway, those are those settings, but you also need to turn off the auto update custom settings because when you turn that on, basically it's, it kind of disables the custom settings feature because anytime you make changes, it will automatically update that custom setting to whatever change you just made. So it won't default back to the changes or before the changes, it's going to save the new ones as the change. So I just didn't enjoy that feature. So I turned it off. Now, if I want to more quickly make some changes in the menu and I do want them to save, what I would do is I would just go turn this on, go make my changes and then come back and turn it off. But 
Anyway, I don't need it. After I got everything set up, I disabled it. Um, it did cause me some confusion at first because I would change things and then it wouldn't default back to what I had set up and I realized that was why. So anyway, then just going down here through the white balance is on auto. Yes, I touch on that later. Uh, and then the sharpness minus two, high ISO noise reduction minus two. Um, my Classic Chrome setup is detailed in a different video. I might break it down again for the H2S, but basically I have it set up on F-Log2 for this mode. And so it doesn't give me access to the tone curve, the dynamic range, the color, but uh, I could really quickly actually just switch over to C4. So now we're in custom four. And if I go down here, you can see this is my classic Chrome setup here. Um, so. Anyway, those are all the settings uh, that I have here. You can just see them, take them for yourself if you want to. Uh, but then the autofocus, like I said, I probably am going to make a dedicated video about using Fuji's autofocus and my autofocus techniques or thoughts in general. Someday that will be made, but for now the focus area just changes where you're actually focusing the focus mode I have on AFC, the focus, uh, then the AF mode, I have it on the area, not multi, never multi to me. I just don't get it. Again, we'll touch on that later, but just, I think do area. Uh, then AFC custom settings. I change this. I currently have it on plus two and then minus five. And I find that this helps to give me more natural autofocus for video, less jumpy, but again, not a huge concern for me. It has helped. Plus two and minus five has been my setup and it's worked for me. Again, video to come, I promise. Uh, AF illuminator is off. Face detection setting is off. I have a short button, shortcut button for that. Subject detection setting is off and we'll have to explore that in a different video, but it is a bummer. You can't do like general object detection. It is very specific per item. Um, and you can't short button cut short cut button your way into which one you want. I don't use these much or have any use for them anyway. So I leave it off as is. And then AFMF, yes, turn that on. This basically means that you can set your camera into manual focus, but override with AF on. So you can use your autofocus button to override manual focus for a single shot. Um, but then you still have all of the manual focus features. So I used to use AFS for this to do a single shot focus, but then you wouldn't have things like peaking or a zoom like focus check. And this basically allows you to autofocus at the start of your shot or during your shot, you can hold the AF on button, but then you still have all of your manual focus features if you want. So anyway, then manual focus assist, speaking of which I use peaking, I do peaking on red high, and I just have always done that. I think on every camera, I'm used to that. Uh, focus check, I have turned off here, but I have a button for that, I'll show you. Then the AFS, uh, instant settings, I just leave it on AFS. Um, I don't, it's not a big important setting for me, so I leave it there. Uh, and then depth of field scale, again, not a big deal for me. Uh, I leave it on pixel basis. And then AF range limiter, I don't know um, what exactly my need for that would be. Uh, I can think of some settings where this would apply, but not for me, so I don't think that I need it. I just leave it off. Uh, and then touch screen mode is set to area. And that's because it controls where my box goes. If I use the touch screen, it does not control the actual AF, like turning on and focusing on a particular area because I like to use the area box focus. So I like being able to move my focus box with a touch uh, if I want to, but I don't want it to actually like turn on or lock the focus there for any reason. So uh, focus check lock is turned off. I don't like when it does the focus check. I don't like that 
it would stay on the focus check. But again, we have a shortcut button for this. So after this, it gets pretty uneventful until the buttons. So I'll just walk through really quickly. I have these set to minus three on both of them, but I have a button for this. Um, then level limiter on, um, wind filter off, low cut off, headphones default. Uh, time code, I don't use it personally. So here we are. Uh, user setting, we're gonna get into uh, the buttons, but anyway, uh, the My Menu, I already showed it to you, and then nothing else in here. None of the sounds are particularly relevant to video, so I won't walk through those. The screen settings, uh, the screen settings, there's only really walking through, uh, well, F-Log Assist is very important. F-Log Assist should definitely be on. I don't see any reason to have it off. Um, natural live view, always have off. I have seen this cause problems for people. Always leave that off. I can't think of why you would need it on. Just don't turn that on. Um, framing guideline, I have it on HD just because I shoot video. Um, focus scale units, you could change to feet or meters depending on what you're comfortable with. Uh, either one is fine for me. Um, but then this one is important here. I'll just scroll through quickly so you can see how I have my settings set up to show on the screen. So I won't really talk through these. Yeah, so there are my display custom settings. Hopefully that might help you out. Uh, I don't like my screen to be busy, so um, yeah, speaking of screen not being busy, Q menu background is transparent. Uh, so that way when I'm in the Q menu, it doesn't pull up a menu background. I just, I want to see my video. I want to quickly change a setting and then I want to get back to it. So transparent works for me. Uh, and there's really nothing else in here that I think needs addressed. Button dial settings. We're going to get into that, uh, in just a moment, but Let's see, power management. I have this set to five minutes to record this video. Normally I have it set to two minutes. Uh, I don't want it to turn off really quickly when I'm not using it. I do want to have a little bit of time, but uh, it is nice to that you can just change it to all the way down to I think 15 seconds. And so, um, you know, depending on your use case, uh, change it. Auto power off temp. I wanted to show this because this is really important here. You have to change this inside of your custom settings mode that you should go change this to high. Uh, and yes, it will warn you, but go change it to high. Um, it is important for avoiding overheating that you go change that. So that is an important setting inside of the power management. It's kind of buried in there, um, but definitely go change that. Then inside of the save data, I use continuous and I also don't mess with any of these settings. Um, so if there's any reason that I should, uh, somebody let me know because yeah, I'm always open to learning new setting tips. Finally, we're on the custom buttons here and I'll try to move quick. The focus lever settings for me are set to zoom as well as tilt is the selection so that I can move around. And that's basically controlling your back button here, the joystick kind of thing. Um, and then the edit save quick menu um, this is your Q menu and I have it set to eight slots. I, I don't like to have a busy Q menu. I rarely find myself using it. Um, now the function settings. So record button, I left it as it is, though I also use the shutter button mostly. Then auto white balance lock. I have covered this in other videos. You do have to go change it to a toggle, not a hold, not a hold feature but I have that set to the ISO button. So the ISO button on the top dial is set to control that. And then the white balance is set on the white balance button. I just left it where it is. And then you have the function one, which is this button back here. And I have that set to just press is the focus check. So that way I can turn it on, turn it off, focus check before I start rolling and then start rolling. So that, is my focus check button when I'm in manual. 
Then my ISO is set to the front button right in here in the finger grip kind of area because we'll kind of go backwards here. You cannot change the command dials so that they control the ISO. This seems like an enormous oversight to me. I don't know how this got missed, but Fujifilm, if you're watching this, if you're listening, I definitely think that the ISO needs to be assignable inside of this area here. I can't think of a reason that it's not assignable. So please make that assignable because for now you have to press a button and then change your ISO in order to make it work. I just think it needs to be on a dial because when I'm shooting video, ISO is important for me. When, when I'm in running gun situations and I need to be adjusting my exposure quickly. So anyway, my ISO button is right here because then I can just press the button, change my dial and be on my way. I don't have to you know, go up here on top to the ISO button and then change it. It feels really unnatural to me. The whole thing is odd, but press the front button, change your ISO. That seems easy to me. Uh, and then this is your focus mode. Um, I'm, I just think that the, I'm used to the focus toggle being on the X-T3 and the 4, so I like that as my focus mode. Uh, and then the crop, the movie crop magnification. I said this before, but I love this feature. So I have that on my front button. And the reason I have it on my, on my top button here is so that then while, or like right before I start recording, if I want the extra punch, that I don't wanna to have to do in post because I know that I already want it, then I'll just click the button and it adds a 1.3x zoom. So I'll just demonstrate that here. Um, and I'm already cropped by 1.29 because of the 4K 120, but 1.38 crop happens and it's really nice because it just adds a punch in the camera. You don't have to think about doing it later. So anyway, it's a nice feature to me. Then I have my uh, classic Chrome or my access to the different um, film simulations right here. I don't see a reason to change it. And then I have my microphone adjustments on the right side in case you know the mic is really hot usually is a reason if I need to turn it down extra. I don't like to use auto, but if I need to, um, I'll go set that up. Then I have my face on and off. So face detection on and off is just set to the bottom button so that if I'm in man if I'm in autofocus and if I want to just quickly turn on the face detect, it's right there on a button, one click and I have face detect turned on. It's been convenient. I don't use any of the touch functions, swipes. You could, um, it doesn't fit my use case. So I don't have any of those on. And then on the back, I have on auto exposure, lock, as well as AF on, on their default buttons. I do sometimes use auto exposure lock for running gun settings, uh, just personally, you know, if I'm making a vlog or if I'm traveling and I just want something a little easier, I will just use auto exposure lock because I'll set the uh, ISO to the auto setting and then I'll just turn on classic Chrome and I'll just then have to uh, play with exposure compensation. So I like using auto exposure lock, so I leave it on there. Uh, and then my Q button and my view mode are also on their default settings. So those are all of my button layouts here. So just to wrap up, uh, the function button I have left as a function button, the command dial settings I have set up to shutter speed on the front and aperture on the back, but I actually just use the command ring on the lens in order to change my aperture. Uh, so that actually just ends up being my ISO dial. Uh, so I press the front button for ISO, change it on the back, and that's my ISO dial. Hopefully that gets addressed. Then shutter speed operation is on. Uh, I actually have forgotten what this did. I did have to turn it on. You have to make sure to turn this on. I have forgotten what exactly this applied to, but make sure you turn it on. You can then also change which direction your command dials work. Uh, the one that works for me is having it on uh, smaller to larger and larger to smaller. 
per dial. I don't know why it makes sense in my head, but you can change that if you want. Uh, then the shutter AF and the shutter AE, uh, I have them both all on. Shoot without the lens is turned on. If you're using anamorphic or vintage lenses, uh, you need to do shoot without lens turned on and then shoot without card. I leave it on, it comes default. Um, and then this part, if you're using uh, Fuji's fly-by-wire rings, you wanna change it to linear and you can change the rotation whatever way makes sense. Um, you can get in here and mess with all of these. I don't use those lenses very often or ever, so these don't apply to me particularly, but you might wanna change those. Uh, then the important thing about the wind pressing versus the switch is that you need to set these up because uh, then the auto exposure and the auto white balance lock are on a switch toggle rather than when you press it. So yeah, make sure that both of these are set up to a switch if you want to use auto exposure and if you want to uh, set up the uh, auto white balance lock. So. Yeah, then uh, the play button while, while inside of the play menu, if you press ISO, it turns on Wi-Fi. Uh, and then inside of your touch screen, you can use the different settings here. I only have on the touch screen settings for, it uh, looks like photo here. And then um, I do sometimes allow for the focusing to follow where I press. So those are pretty much all of my settings here. Uh, I don't really use any of the connectivity settings. I leave them all as default. So that's pretty much all that I have set up. The menus in here are really, really impressive. They're exciting that you can access so many custom features and now you have the custom dials. And quite frankly, I'm at a point where I rarely ever have to get into the menus aside from setting up the camera and when I started with the camera setting up the custom modes. But right now, I rarely touch the menus, which is my ideal way to use a camera, is to avoid the menus, to work as quickly and efficiently as possible, and just use it as a tool. So anyway, if this video helped you, leave me a comment, say hello. I wanna thank you so much for watching. Be blessed today, my friend.